this is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and now for something a little different, yet the same. This is the Asus Zenfone AR. So, good times. Asus has made it to a U.S. carrier, and this is the second AR Tango phone that we're going to take a look at. The first was the Lenovo Fab 2 Pro. That thing was just huge. And they've had several months, obviously, Asus to develop something even slimmer and sleeker and perhaps better. We're going to look at it now. So the Zenfone that we're looking at today is the U.S. model for Verizon. It's $648 or $27 a month if you go for the monthly payment plan. On the expensive side, certainly, but it's a pretty full-featured phone. 5.7-inch display, QHD resolution, so it's 2560 by 1440. That's 515 PPI. Good display. It's AMOLED, thus it works with Google Daydream VR right here. So it does VR and AR. Let's see what other acronyms we can throw in here. Snapdragon 821 CPU, 2.4 gigahertz clock speed. So yeah, it's an older CPU. The speed wise, it would be hard to tell from the Snapdragon 835 though, but the power management is certainly better on the newer 835 chip. And for this price, it hurts that it doesn't have the 835. 6 gigs of RAM, which is more than usual, and 128 gigs of storage, also more than usual, plus a micro SD card slot compatible with cards up to 2 terabytes. Before we go on further, though, I'd like to tell you about LG's new campaign for their ultralight Gram laptops, which is, we have the 15-inch sitting here behind this, and we'll be reviewing it soon. It's called the 2017 Share the Art Hashtag LG Gram Campaign, and LG has collaborated with Doodle known on Instagram as the world traveling artist and coffee enthusiast for this campaign with some cool artwork. Visit the link in the description below to check out the art and share it on social media. Be sure to post your shares link on the event page to enter to win one of 14 LG Gram laptops. This is a pretty cool giveaway. 14 Gram laptops are giving away. In addition, they're also giving out Amazon gift cards and LG monitors. And they certainly make some nice monitors. Even if you don't win, you'll have a second chance to win. Visit the YouTube link in the description and watch the behind the scenes video and leave a comment to say what your favorite LG Gram feature is. The event runs from August 31st to September 14th, 2017. And back to the Zenfone AR. You know, it's a really, relatively speaking, thin and light phone, certainly compared to the only other Tango phone on the market, the Lenovo Fab 2 Pro, which was a beast of a phone. This one's lighter than I would have expected, and it's not bad looking at all. We got not much bezel going on on the sides. We certainly have some space on top and bottom. Notice there's a mechanical physical home button here. This doubles as a fingerprint scanner, and you've got capacitive back and home buttons over here. Headphone jack, awesome, USB-C, and this is your speaker, and the speaker is pretty loud and clear. I have to say the volume on this is impressive. Your micro SD card and nano SIM card go here behind this little door. And the back is, well, utilitarian looking. I do like it better than older Zen phones that had that kind of faux metal finish in, in kind of gaudy red and gold. This is, I suppose, more understated, and it's kind of a pebbled plastic finish. This is not a removable back. I know you see plastic and you might think so, but no, it's not. And we've got this monstrosity of a camera and sensor assembly going on here for the Tango. AR features. Controls on the side are pretty standard. You got your power, you got your volume up and down, a little bit of texture. This has a vibrate motor that the sound of it is sort of like a mosquito, a tiny mosquito going and it, it barely vibrates your hand at all. I don't know what's up with that. We have an 8 megapixel shooter up front. The back camera is 23 megapixels. That's pretty darn good for uh, camera phone. Of course, megapixels aren't everything. We'll talk about the camera in detail in a bit. The phone runs Android 7 Nougat, and it has Asus's Zen UI, which isn't super duper heavy. This stuff looks fairly normal here, and Verizon's usual selection of applications, uh, bloatware, whatever you want to call it. And the settings menu, the look is certainly different from stock Android here, but I'm, I'm not bothered by it. Boy, you can have a lot of quick access things going on here. This menu looks fairly normal compared to other Android phones that don't have heavy skin overlays on it. And we've got just a couple of customizations available from Asus here. We've got the Zen Motion. So you've got gestures and you can write various letters on the screen to open different applications, for example. There's also something to change the display color temperature if you wish as well. You've got glove mode on board. And VR motion settings too, for those of you who are going to be using this with VR, something like Google Daydream. 
The Qualcomm Snapdragon 821 is no slouch. Again, like I said, the biggest difference is going to be the, the better power management in the newer 835 chip. But the performance numbers here and benchmarking are quite good. We got our Ice Storm scores on 2.2, on 2.2 in detail, and our Geekbench 3 scores. It doesn't feel like a slow phone. The, the Zen UI is not that much a heavy overlay. There's no speed issues going on here, and it's perfectly capable of handling VR as well as the AR tasks. And AR is a pretty heavy lifter. And that's one issue. This is a 3300 milliamp battery again sealed inside. This back does not come off. Uh, that's a decent sized battery, but boy, particularly AR, to a certain extent VR, but uh, augmented reality, boy, that can really eat the battery fast. So depending on how much you use those features, and if you bought the phone wanting those features, you probably will, you probably won't make it through a day if you're playing with those things. If you're just using it as a normal Android phone and not using those features, as those of us who go to work during the day and can't play with these neat features would do, you, you could make it through the day, but it's certainly not an Energizer bunny. The rear 23 megapixel camera on this is good, but surprisingly, you know, megapixels aren't everything. It certainly doesn't beat the Galaxy S8, even the HTC U11. This is some 4K video here, and it has 4-axis image stabilization, but the video feels a little jerky. Stable, yet jerky. The colors are perhaps a little over-amplified. Part of that is the fact we're looking at it through the AMOLED screen. Certainly it captures plenty of detail, and it has a whole lot of photo options, too. There's even one that merges photos to try to get you even more detail, which in theory shouldn't be needed when you have 23 megapixels. Low light, lots of detail. Embarrassingly, it's even capturing the dust there on the keyboard of that gaming laptop and another low light photo. Now, here's the thing. Color balance varies widely here. This looks a little uh, too cool. That one's very warm. So it's those little tweaks and adjustments that I'd like to see to make it an even better camera. But certainly it's not a bad one. Tango features, that's the augmented reality stuff, certainly have gotten smoother since the Fab 2 Pro came out. And there's now around 80 apps or so in the Play Store for Tango AR. Mostly those are useful for once in a while life events like remodeling your house or redecorating a room. Stores like Lowe's have even carried the first Tango phone and now the Gap lets you play with clothes and such. Mostly the apps feel like they're kind of retail focused to sell you stuff though, more than anything else. But there's a few other neat things. That will sh you can see the, the BMW i8 virtual tour. Sure, BMW is trying to sell you an i8, but gosh, most of us will never be able to afford one. It's cool to look at it. And we've got one that puts dinosaurs in the room, you know, the usual AR sort of things. When you're doing AR, the phone gets hot on the back. Likewise, if you're playing intense 3D games too, and it, if you're doing VR, if you have it inside the Google Daydream, it's going to get very toasty. But to be fair, so does the Samsung Galaxy family if you put it inside of Samsung's VR goggles because you've got it doing intense things in a very constrained space. So that's the Asus Zenfone AR available now on Verizon in the United States and available overseas as well as an unlocked phones available in Canada a couple of places. And it's always a challenge to compete with the high-end phones when you're talking about 650 bucks or so. You're looking at some pretty fancy competition. So the real selling point with this would be the AR, the augmented reality, the Tango stuff, which right now there's not a lot of really compelling things to do with it. I am a lot of the apps are really geared just to sell you stuff from Home Depot and Wayfair and places like that. But in the interest, it'll be interesting to see what happens in the future now that we have Google doing AR core and trying to bring augmented reality to the masses. Maybe this phone is just a little ahead of its time. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid.